How's it going out there? Welcome from H2 Tech Videos. Today we're gonna to be going over the new Galaxy S6 for beginners. If this is your first uh, Samsung phone or maybe you came from S3 to S6, we're just gonna walk you through the basics on how to use it, uh, the buttons and all the basic stuff like that. This will be a video done in parts. So we're gonna go over some basics in one. We'll have a part two, part three, part four, whatever, however many are needed, but let's jump right in. So uh, first thing we wanna go over, I always start here is, um, your uh, power slash standby button. So if you want to turn the phone off, you're gonna hold down this button right here and that's gonna bring up your power off, airplane mode, restart, emergency mode. So if you need to turn your phone off or to restart it, it's simply just by holding that button right there. Or if you're getting on a plane and you're about to, you know, need to switch to airplane mode, that's also your quick shortcut, just a quick hold right there. Um, next thing is uh, to take a screenshot you're gonna just simply hold that same button but also your uh, home button at the same time. So if you hold them both, it will actually snap a picture of your screen. So just a real quick uh, slide in there. The first thing I usually like to go over are the buttons um, and our, our buttons at the bottom here because on every new device, they do slightly change it. So um, first thing is gonna be the, the home button here. And uh, this button does a few different things. So let's say I go into an app. Let's say I'm in the uh, internet app, right? And I want to get back to my main screen. I'm just going to hit that home button and that's going to take me right home. So no matter what you're doing, if you're in an app, if you want to get back to your main screen, you're going to just hit that home button, right? Well, what we can also do is we can hold down on it. So a long press and that will bring up what's called Google Now. And what Google Now does is it actually it'll kind of learn the things that you search for. For example, let's say you search for a sports score or uh, even something as simple as if someone emails you a confirmation of a flight, it'll actually have this information in here. So for example, I flew somewhere last week and in here it actually showed me my flight information. I was able to see if the flight was on time, running late, what terminal it was in. Really intuitive and it just learns the things that you do and makes your life a little bit easier. Even down to if you got an email confirmation of a package that was coming to your house, it would actually show the routing number or the tracking number uh, in here. And um, you can also use this for other things like Google searching addresses or what food places around you or even just asking you questions. So that's a long press. Now, one of the other uh, really cool things that they've added to the S6 is when you double tap on the home button, it actually will launch your camera. So check this out, I'm gonna hit it twice, click, click, and it automatically launches the camera. So no matter what you're doing, in fact, let's say I'm in Waze, which is a navigation app, and I'm navigating somewhere, and I see a celebrity on the right of my car. Oh my God, I gotta get a picture of that. I'm gonna double tap my home button, and it's gonna automatically switch right to the camera. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I wanna stress one more thing, and that is even if I were to turn the phone off and I double tap, it's gonna automatically launch the camera as well. So this is uh, really awesome because no other phone in the market does this. And uh, again, really cool. No matter what you're doing, that camera is just gonna pop right up. And um, so that's what that home button is gonna do. Double tap is gonna launch the camera. A long press will bring up Google Now. And one press will take you back to your home screen, for example, if you're in an app. To the right of that, we have our back button, which you can't see it right now, but um, when you tap, it does come up. So let's say I am I go to the internet to look at something. Now, if I hit the back button, it's gonna take me out of that. So think of this as like taking you back one step. For example, if you're on the internet, and let's say you click on a link on a website, and it's the wrong link, you would normally hit the back button in the browser and that would take you back one website. Well, that's essentially what this button does. So if you're in an app, let's say we go back to internet and let's say we tap uh, tabs. If I hit back, it's gonna take me out of that and if I press it again, it takes me out of the app. So it just takes you back one step uh, based on what you were doing. To the left of that, we have our recent apps button and um, by tapping this, we actually get to see all the apps that are currently running on the phone. And this is really convenient because obviously, um, people usually don't think about when you open an app and you hit your home button, that doesn't close the app. The app is still running in the background. So if you wanted to go back to that app later and continue working on what you were doing, you can, but it's also a big drainer on your battery. So here's how you want to use this function. 
I can tap recent apps and let's say I want to go back to my camera. I could tap right here and go back to it. Or you might say, gosh, there's a lot of things running right now. I'm just going to go ahead and hit close all and that will close all the apps at one time, essentially helping to save and restore your battery. So uh, just by tapping it is what brings up the recent apps, but you can also do a long press and this is what will bring up your um, multi window. And what multi-window does is it actually allows you to have two apps open at once. So for example, I can have my Instagram up here. So just tap it. And then I can have my music app open down here. So it's a really fun thing. Imagine being able to change the track on your music while still staying connected with your Instagram and seeing, hey, what your friends are posting. You can also turn it sideways so it is supported in landscape as well. And there's a pretty cool list. So for example, if I long press again, I can switch the app that's, um, that's in there. So Netflix, great new addition, uh, text messages. Imagine being able to have Facebook and your text messages open at once. Um, Pandora, YouTube, um, Gmail. So you've got a really good uh, selection of apps. Here's how I use this feature. I normally will have my music open at the bottom and I have my GPS open at the top. So. I'm always connected and I actually will have my directions at the top, but I can also change my songs, especially if that song you like goes off and then that wax song comes on, you know, no need to have to sit there and listen to it while you make that next turn. So that's simply by just long pressing on the, the recent apps button, just like that. All right. Um, and the next and last section we're going to go over just in this first uh, part one, we're going to just swipe down from the top and go over what's called your notification panel. And what this does, uh, you have a shortcut to a lot of important functions on the phone. So for example, flashlight, which is my favorite, one of my favorite editions of the S6. So if I need a flashlight, I just tap this and there it is. We got to let there be light, but also being able to turn on your Wi-Fi, your uh, GPS, even your power saving mode, if you notice your battery is going a little bit lower or it's going down kind of quick, power save will help you save that battery. Uh, Bluetooth, all phones are not going to have the mobile data option, only certain carriers support that, but if you want to turn off your data to help conserve battery, you can do that. Airplane mode and uh, ultra power saving mode. Now, one thing that uh, has changed from the S5 to S6 is before you could swipe down with two fingers and it actually brought up a separate menu. Well, they've taken that away now. And so the way to get to more switches is simply hitting edit. And that actually will show you all the other switches that you do have available. And of course we have our uh, shortcut to our settings app, which is right here. So if you tap that wheel, it will take you right to settings and that's where you can make your uh, more uh, advanced changes. So um, we've got our switches. If the light's on, it is activated. If the light's off, it's not. I do encourage you guys to check this. Uh, don't leave your Wi-Fi on all day because that will be a big battery trainer and as well as GPS. If you don't navigate directions a lot, then there's no need to have this on and this can, again, pull out of power. Next, you have a really cool feature called S Finder. So let's say you're trying to search for an email that you sent recently or a note that maybe you took on the phone. S Finder will actually allow you to search the entire phone to find um, maybe, again, uh, something you typed. Or it could be something as simple as, gosh, I know I have the Pandora app, but I can't find it. You could actually go into S Finder and type in Pandora and it'll pull up the app right for you just like that. So it does help you kind of navigate and get to things really quick on the phone. And next we have Quick Connect. And what this does is it allows you to quickly connect to a TV. Let's say you want to mirror your screen to your big uh, flat screen Samsung at home. Quick Connect will allow you to connect right to it. Or something as simple as I want to print something from my phone. This will actually search for any wireless printers that are in the area where you are. And if there is one, you can connect to it and you can print right from your phone. Um, there are some other fun capabilities in there, but those are kind of the main two that people would use. Uh, finally, down here, you'll find notifications. So, for example, if you got some new emails, they'll show up in here. If you got a new text message, it will actually show up in here. You could actually tap it right on here and it'll launch, go right to that app for you. So this is just where you kind of manage all the information that's coming into your phone. So again, text messages, email, maybe you're on Instagram or Pinterest and, and there's new activity, it'll all show up in this section right here. If this fills up and you're trying to clear it out, just hit your clear button just like that 
and it will get rid of them just like that. Finally, the one last thing I want to point out in this first video is your auto brightness. And this is a really important thing. I encourage you guys to keep this box checked because if you're outside and it's really bright and sunny, uh, the phone actually has a sensor that if it catches the sun, it will change the display to what's called adaptive display. And it will actually allow you to read and fully interact with your phone in the sunlight. Uh, this is one of the only phones in the market that has this feature. So sometime if you really need to turn your phone down, you can use the manual brightness, but I encourage you to use the auto brightness. You'll really see a difference using that. So all right, guys, this has been part one of the Galaxy S6 for beginners. We do have more to come, but uh, we're committed to definitely helping you guys learn how to use your device and take advantage of all the fun features that are available. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, favor, and share the video if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to H2 Tech videos and have a good one.